what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, guys? I, why do I say that like a million times at the beginning? I don't know, this is how I feel. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, good day, wherever you're watching from. It's your girl, Lakeisha Michelle here, and this is our Good Tea for Life segment of the day where we are just talking about things that are good for our soul so that we can be better, so that we can do better, so we can receive all the goodness that this world has because there's so much abundance, there's so much reward available, but we have to do some things. We've got to think some type of way, right? And so that's what this is about. We just have a good time and talk about stuff that's good for your soul because what's really funny is that when you, if you just scroll Instagram, for example, I like to scroll Instagram and I have to sometimes get off because it just be the most. But what's interesting is that if you just scroll Instagram, everybody's talking about the tea. Let's get the messy tea for the day. We talking about who did what, who baby mama, who said it, who did it. It's always about drama that does nothing for your soul but it deters you from what you should be working on, what you should be manifesting in your life, what reward you should be receiving. You don't get, I don't get, because we're so busy looking at other people's stuff. We don't even know if it's a real thing or not, but we're so consumed. So this is our time to just be all about our business because that's what really we should be about. Minding our own business. Can I get a yes in the comments and let me know what city you're watching from? Even if you're on the replay, hey, replay. Let me know. Give, let me get a yes in the comments. And if you concur, darling, if you concur with this idea, with this theory, let me tell y'all something. Hey, brother, what's up, Jonathan? Um, I wish you was in Texas right now. Like, I need you to be me over here. Um, Virginia Beach, Virginia in the building. What's up, Lita? What's going on? Yes, from Cali. Yes, from Detroit. Okay, cool, y'all. Feel me. So listen, I was reading this morning, and let me tell y'all, my life's been getting got by these words, okay? I just be trying to mind my business. I'm like, oh, I'm just read the scripture, you know what I'm saying? Just try to stick to the discipline, the rule. Dallas in the building. I'm in Dallas. It's beautiful today. Listen, I try to stick to the rule of... Uh, you know, read in the morning, read at night. If you just try to give yourself a rule and don't make it, and y'all make it on my ring, it's faking out a little bit. Um, let you just stick to the rule of, read, just, I'm gonna read in the morning, I'm gonna read at night. Don't try to make it a big deal. Don't try to be like a proper test. Don't try to be all everything. Just be committed to the rule of, I'm gonna read in the morning and at night to bless my soul. What's up, best friend? <laughs> Lithonia, George in the building, Sophia in the building, Denise, hey boo. Um, New York, you guys are everywhere. We're worldwide, we're worldwide. I was talking to you in Nigeria this morning, okay? Let's be clear. So anyway, if you stick to the rule, it will develop something that you didn't even realize was gonna happen in your life. That's what I know for sure. So the rule is read in the morning, read at night. So for some reason, I got on, oh, I was reading, I got on Haggai 1. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a chapter that I never really read. Um, anybody just all of a sudden felt inspired to open the book of Haggai of the Bible? By the way, we're talking about the Bible. Although, I read all kinds of books. I'm a super, super reader. Hey, y'all are so late. Hey, guys. Hey. Haggai 1. It's only two chapters in the book of Haggai. So, I was like, okay, let me just see what this is. Because I never even, Haggai just sounds random. Because y'all know I live in the book of Proverbs. Newark, New Jersey, in the house. So I'm reading this chapter, and it's like, on the first day of the sixth of the month of the second year. First of all, when I read it, I was like, that's very specific. On the first day, so this is June 1st, okay? On the second year that Darius was king of Persia. I was like, who is Darius? What? This is how you read the Bible. This is how I talk to myself. So I was like, well, who is Darius? This sounds like somebody that you know back in the day from who? Darius. Anyway, so then, okay, I read that said, the Lord told Haggai, the prophet, to speak his message to the governor of Judah and to the high priest. So I was like, okay, this is understandable. So Haggai goes, God told Haggai to tell the governor, who has his really weird name, something. That's understandable. This is how I read the Bible, y'all. So let me just tell y'all this how it goes down. <laughs> so Haggai told the governor, Zerubbabel, and his high priest, Joshua, we know Joshua, if you don't know Joshua, you just need to keep reading about it. That the Lord all powerful has said to the people. So God had a message for the people, okay? Here's the message. This is where it got me, y'all. 
Let me just read it to y'all. This is what the message from God was to the people. You say this isn't the right time to build a temple for me. Now, here's God telling the people. Now, you got to put this in context, but you also got to put this in your life, okay? It says, God said, you say you ain't got time to build my temple. That's what you say you don't have time. So instantly, I was convicted because I was like, oh my gosh, how many things do I say that I don't have time for? But the reality is that's not true. So I kept reading the scripture. It was like, you say this isn't the right time to build a temple for me. But it is the right time for you to live in expensive houses. I was like, dang, God, Ooh, this is harsh. And it's not harsh, it's reality. It's reality. So basically, God was real gangster with the message. He was like, so you say you ain't got time to do what I told you to do, but you got time to live like you balling. <laughs> but you're broke. Okay, that's really what he was saying. He said, while my temple is in a pile of ruins. I was like, ooh. Now, some of some, the old me, when I was a kid, I used to look at scripture and go, we ain't building no temple. Why do I care, right? That's old. And it's not. Think about it. If you love God, there is kingdom work to be done. Kingdom work in your business. Kingdom work in your personal life. Kingdom work in the community. Kingdom work looks like doing the principles that God talks about in this Bible, like you living it out. There are things that God is telling us to do. There are laws that God has. There are laws. There's a law about so many things. I'm going to go through some of them. But like, there are certain laws that are not written in like the state or the government law, but it's just the law. Like taking 10% and putting it up, right? That's the law. If you don't put your money up, you know what I'm saying? Eventually, something's going to pop off and you're not going to be prepared. That's the law. You don't have to fight. It ain't written. You're not going to get in trouble if you don't follow the law, but that's the law. And hence why everybody follow but everybody broke. Okay, so it says, this is a scripture. <laughs> this is some tough love for your tail, okay? You say this isn't the right time to build a temple for me, but it is right for you to live in expensive houses while my temple is a pile of ruin. So there is something that you and I are putting off, and it's costing us something, right? Just look at what's happening. This is what the scripture says. Just look at what's happening. Uh, you harvest less than you plant. You never have enough to eat or drink. Your clothes don't keep you warm. And your wages are stored in bags full of holes. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. This right here? I was done. I was like, throw it all away. I can't even take it. Oh my God. Why? Because this requires you to look at yourself. Where are you saying that you are doing something that you're not really doing, but you got time for everything else? So God is, this is, this is some bold stuff right here. And that's the thing. This is the road that's travel because it requires you to really assess your life. It's easy for me to look at you and tell you what you need to do. Well, girl, you know you should do this, honey. You should do this. Well, you said you should do this. Blah, 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 blah. Like, that's easy. But to look at my life and say, where am I not doing what God has called me to do, but I'm expecting to receive? So if you watched yesterday's Good Tea, hey, y'all. Mm -hmm. If you watched yesterday's Good Tea, we talked about in Proverbs 12 and 14, it says, from the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands bring their reward. So we were talking about, basically, what you say and what you do is a result of whatever you have in your life right now. And so, it's like, real simple, but it's real complicated. Because, here's the other part, here's the complicated part. And I tell you guys to really study and really do research and don't stop at, I don't understand, so I quit, right? We're human, okay? And there's a lot of psychological things that happen. There's a lot that happens in your soul, at a soul level. And so here we are trying to live this great life, but we also have things 
that shape their that shape our beliefs. And if you don't believe something, you won't do something, you won't say something, you won't put in the work. So it's easy to say that all you gotta do is develop a discipline and then you're gonna have this thing. But typically we don't develop the skill, the muscle, the thing. We don't develop the discipline because there's something that's stopping us. And it gives you that stuck feeling. And so you keep going in circles. And we go in, we, I included, go in circles because let me tell you something. That's what God is saying in Haggai. So in the story, in Haggai, it's beautiful because like there's a harsh judgment that's given to the people. Like y'all ain't got nothing because you refuse to follow these laws that build up my kingdom. You refuse to do the things that I'm telling you to do. You do what you want to do because you just want the feelings. You want immediate gratification, right? But God is saying, like, until you actually do build my temple. And it's as simple as we can bring it in 2018. Building God's temple is first just getting you together. Building your temple. Getting the word and saying, Lord, where am I not doing right in my life? Like, for real. And it goes in every department. See, when I was growing up, I felt like it was always a condemnation and the, the you're going to hell message. And so it, it deterred me from ever wanting to be to really research and, and building the temple and you can do it in everything in your business in your personal life in your character being a good friend being a good mate being a good business owner being a good steward of what's given to you and, and the scripture was real gangster because it said you harvest less than you plant you harvest less than you plant you never have enough to eat or drink your clothes don't keep you warm your money goes into bags with holes in it that's some real life stuff. Anybody ever felt like every time you make money, it disappeared? Anybody ever felt like you never have enough of this or you never really get all the way to this point, whatever the point is? That's what it's talking about because we are not putting the temple and the kingdom first. It's harsh. This is for me as well, y'all. Like, I was like, ooh, you expect to harvest something, but you haven't put in the work. Okay, and yesterday the scripture in Proverbs says it very clearly. Like, what you say and what you do bring you a reward or a punishment. It has no, it's not biased. So, so you can't be walking around acting like the world is against you because it's not biased. We're all born into circumstances. We have experiences that give us hurt, that, that knock us down, that make us feel guilty, that make us feel shame. We have all of that to deal with. That's why this is simple, but it's hard. Because you're human and you have emotions and God gives us free will. So we have to choose to do the things that's not sexy. So here's in the scripture in Haggai, they're told to build the temple and they say they don't have time. And you balling. They say you live in expensive houses. So it's showing you what you value. You'd rather have the look. Right? And so it's saying you got time to live. You got time to live here. And you wonder why you don't have anything. Because you haven't filled my temple. You haven't done what God asked you to do. And the funny thing is I used to always be like, well, what does God want me to do? And if you really think about it, all you got to do is look at your actions. And, and, and here's the funny part. God ain't going to, the devil... And you can make the devil be a pitchfork and a red hat. That's not it. It's like if you believe in good, you believe in evil. And as much as there's angels, there's also evil spirits, right? So you're, there's always the good and evil battle. So God is not, evil is not going to tell you to fast so you can get quiet and hear. That's not evil. That's God. That's God telling you to get clear so you can sit down somewhere and get clear on what you should be working on. God is going to tell you to break up or release something that no longer serves you. God's going to tell you to stop eating this thing that is tearing up your body. God, that's all good, right? And that's the stuff that we see in here. We're like, mm, no, I'm going to keep doing, you know, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. It's just that simple. And so if you look at what you're trying to manifest into your life and you use the biblical principles, it's just a matter of what am I saying? What am I doing? And what am I trying to harvest? So I had to look up the word harvest because you know, if y'all saw my live stream yesterday, you see my daddy was studying with all those Bibles and stuff. He got all them books. I ain't got all them books in my house. So I had to get on Google, honey. And I look up the word harvest. I like to look up words and look at the root words and break down the word and look at what, you know, all of that, right? So if you just look up the word harvest as it relates to the Bible, the gathering of things planted. 
a natural time of reaping and joy what has been produced during the year in agriculture community. So the gathering of things planted. So if we look at that scripture, it's saying you trying to gather something, but you ain't planted the seeds. You're trying to gather something, but you haven't planted the seeds because your focus is wrong. It's on the expensive things. It's on the shiny things. It's on the whatever, trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's an ouch message. This is an ouch message for me, so I, I can't speak for you, but I was like, like, you're never done. And I made an interesting, I made an interesting uh, note to myself a long time ago is where, you know, you work so hard to reach a goal, and then when you reach that goal, you celebrate the goal for too long. Like, you celebrate the goal for too long. So what happens is time is going by, but you're still living on what you did, what you accomplished. And while I'm grateful, while that's awesome, there was more to be done. There's always more to be done. Progression is the name of the game. And so we live in that moment, and then time is passing, and you're just like, for real, you're just like, why isn't this happening and that happening? Oh, because you're so busy measuring up what you used to do. It's about today. So if you now desire another level, you got to be living in the now and look at what your now actions are doing. What are you doing today? <laughs> Everybody like, ouch, I know, it sucks. It's tough. But if, if you really want to change, if you really want transformation in your life, Bump everybody else's life. Like, I'm not trying to be funny, but in order for you to help other people, I'm only sharing with you guys after I do my own tea, after I take my own medicine. And I just compel to sharing, to share this with you, but not from a place of, oh, Keisha got it together. No, I, from a place of, I'm getting my stuff together, I'm correcting my mess, and I'm telling y'all, like, for real, for real, this is what we have to do, right? So, if we desire true change, if we desire to put something in the bag that don't have a hole at the bottom. It requires us to turn our attention back to the kingdom and back to building the temple. Because at the end of the day, what is our attention? What is the world making you have attention on? What is the world? What is everything in, in our daily life wanting us to put our focus on? Put some in the comments. Let's just talk about this. What is, what is the narrative that we see, this is so good, I don't wanna get up and get water even though I know we don't replay. <laughs> Kareem, I just got to Houston, I love it, I'm in Dallas. The one that says, girl, yes. Well, what are you supposed to do when you have a dream but you need somebody to walk you through one-on-one? -on -one? You just find that somebody and you pray and ask God, that's where you ask God to put you in the right path of the person. Cause let me tell y'all something, you know how many books walk me through one-on-one? -on -one? Brian Tracy, I tell y'all, eat that frog, changed my life. I didn't even, I just went and got the book. It was on the internet for $20. You know what I'm saying? So, so really asking God, getting quiet, cutting off everything you think, God, who's the next mentor for me? Show it to me, whether it's a book, whether it's an actual person, whether it's a, a, a class, whether it's a whatever. Like maybe it's a scripture. Let me tell y'all something. These scriptures will get your life. But you gotta actually tone stuff down so that you can actually really, really, really receive and listen. Because Proverbs, let me tell y'all what Proverbs will tell us as it relates to business. I've been building up this whole Proverbs list because I'm going to do something for you guys, for myself, really, and then I'm going to share it with you guys. But it's like, if I just go through and find my favorite, my favorite Proverbs scriptures, it tells you all about customer service. It tells you how to run your business, how to manage your money. It tells you how to treat people. It gives you all of that in Proverbs. Right? And so... It's not so much as, don't, don't look at it as a spectrum. of, what was me, you know, um, I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, nobody ain't never taught me. There's a lot of stuff people haven't taught a lot of people. Like a lot of people, I'm blessed enough to have, even being adopted, I got a mama who taught me how to be a lady, how to prepare a home, how to cook, how to pray in the morning before everybody get up. This is what, I'm blessed enough to have that. Even though I was giving up, at birth, like my mom, my biological mother didn't raise me, couldn't raise me. I was blessed enough to be raised by a set of parents who were able to show me certain things. Everybody don't have that. I got a cousin, he said, man, you got this, you got that. We didn't get that growing up, you know? But you can't sit an excuse because you see what I got and you see that's what you need to get, so you should get it. 
we can't sit and I can't say, well, I'm in an abusive relationship. I was in an abusive relationship. So because of that, I don't trust people, but I want, I now desire to be married or I now desire this type of love, but I'm just going to sit in the fact that I was abused. And so every new person that come along needs to understand my abuse story. Da, 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 da. I'm going to hold on to what happened to me. And so now I'm trying to manifest this kind of love, but I'm not really trying to reciprocate and be and grow and learn and what. That's it. So we can never sit in our excuses. We can acknowledge what we've been through and get the lesson from it and thank it and, and, and forgive for playing. There's a part I played in an abusive relationship as well. So I forgive myself for the part that I played. I thank this situation because the lesson that I got is going to carry me for the rest of my life. I can share it with myself and with others. I'm grateful for that experience and I'm now ready to receive the next, the next level. I'm now ready to receive my heart's desire. I'm now open to change and for the better, to progress for the better. Like that's how your thinking should be about whatever it is that you want to manifest right now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What Annette, what you talking about? Um Okay, so look, y'all know I got 80 minutes. Listen to me so I'm looking at the comments. Um <laughs> Hey guys, an awesome book. Yes, it's short and sweet, only two chapters. I dare you guys to go read that. Okay, so listen. Back to the chapter. It says, you say it's not the right time to build the temple. So, so sometimes, I know for me, I've always said that, oh, I don't have, this is not the right time to do that. But what happens is, you end up doing stuff every single day, and because you're avoiding the thing that you should be doing, you're just making a big freaking mess. And so then you wonder why when you put money in the bag, it's a hole at the bottom. You wonder why you try to go out for these new opportunities, they fell through. You weren't prepared to receive. You haven't been preparing to receive. You haven't been preparing to receive. You haven't been preparing to receive, but you're trying to gather things. You're trying to gather things, you know, from the harvest, but you didn't plant the seeds. And so it says, it makes you say that life is hard. But life is not hard. Life is what you make it. God gave us the ability to make it. Therefore, no matter whatever that you or I am going through right now, we have the power to get ourselves out of the situation. And the punishment and the bad feelings and the negative results also allow us to look back to God and say, God, I'm sorry for not taking action, for not preparing for what you're trying to give me. And I take this punishment. I take this result of my actions as a sign that you still exist, that you still love me, that you're telling me to look your way, and that you're gonna give me the signs and my next best step, not the whole staircase, but God, you're gonna give me the next best step, and I'm gonna take that step and take whatever consequences that are resulting from my actions with pride, with excitement, because now I have you at the center, and you're gonna give me peace through the storm, and you're telling me that I'm gonna make it through the storm, that it's already done, and that there's a blessing on the other side. So I thank you, God. I thank you for this punishment. I thank you for this thing that doesn't feel really good right now because it's only a result of my actions. And I'm asking for forgiveness for the part that I played in this situation. And I'm grateful and I'm excited about what's coming. And Lord, you're gonna give me the right next best step. You're giving me the right next best step. I see the right next best step. I'm writing it down. It comes to me in my dreams. I maybe hear it on a live stream or, or maybe I read a book and I'm just grateful because I'm open and I'm, I'm expecting it. So I'm looking for it. Thank you, God. 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 It's that simple. That's how you talk to God. That's how you pray. Like you gotta be, and then be quiet. And then be quiet. Because it's not always about just talking, 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 talking. But it is about being real with yourself in that manner and saying, you know what, I'm in this situation, it's cool. Tough, but it's cool. Sometimes you're born into something really, really crappy. Sometimes you're born into something really, really crappy. But everything works out for our good. And so when you can train yourself in the crappy situation to just be worried about the good stuff, I'm focused on the good stuff. And even though this is happening to me, I know that all things work together for my good. Thank you, God, for my good. Every single day, every single minute sometimes, every single hour. Thank you, God, for my good. Because 
sometimes you won't know what to say. If this is new to you, you won't know what to say. I remember watching people growing up and I'm like, ooh, they are so holy. They know all this fancy stuff. I don't know nothing about that, like I don't know. And I just, it's like, I believe in God, but I don't know. I can talk like that. She talking real fancy. <laughs> and don't knock that person. There are people that's always gonna be further along. I did a program with my friend, Regan Hillier, multi-millionaire. I only can speak to six figures. I can't talk to you about, you know what I'm saying? I can only talk to you. But we had the same thought process. She's just further along than me. She's been practicing longer than me. So, of course she has more than me, but she's a beautiful testament of where I'm going. So, yeah, I'm worthy of having a conversation. And I'm simply preparing to receive and learning the lesson. And you will stay stuck until you get the lesson. And when you get that lesson, it's gonna feel like, it's gonna feel like peace is just floating through the air, even in turmoil. Something that just isn't comfortable. It, you wanna cry about it, it hurts. Cause it's still gonna hurt. It's still gonna hurt. But you get peace because you finally got the lesson. And you feel like something just, something's in the air, right? That's what transformation looks like. It's the road less traveled because it requires you to turn off stuff and be quiet and really assess what you're doing and really get real about why you're doing it. Why am I doing this? And then what do I now desire? What, what do I want to change? How do I want to change? God help me. It's just as simple as saying, God help me. And you'll be surprised what book, what person, what thought, what comes along? And you go, wow, that was quick. <laughs> That's how it works. That's spiritual guidance. That's what spiritual guidance looks like. And that's why you got to be careful with your spirit and your heart and who you're letting pour into you. But anyway, this right here got my life this morning. I was like, oh, goodness. Read Haggai. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a chapter that I've done. This how this how short was in my brain. I was like, Haggai, this seems weird. I don't know nothing about Haggai. <laughs> so I just ignored it. it. So don't be doing that to the Bible scriptures. Like there are certain books of the Bible that I never really look at. Malachi, Haggai, these are just interesting names. I just stick with what I know. I go to Proverbs, I go to Psalms, I go to Genesis, I go to Exodus. But it's like, don't be doing Haggai like that. Read Haggai, Haggai got my life. The context of it is here are these people that have been, God allowed them to be captured and taken over. God allowed them to be punished so that they could actually listen because they wouldn't listen to God. God said, don't worship no other God. They up here putting up, they putting idols in the temple. They worshiping everybody and their mama. They killing their kids, sacrificing the other God. All kinds, they just ratchet. They going hard. They're completely ignoring the laws so god was like okay okay that's how you want to play with me so boom shut it down now y'all struggling oh we call on god in the struggle but let's not wait till the struggle and if you're in the struggle know that this is the moment to say hey god i'm sorry <laughs> i'm my bad i'm for real sorry this time and mean it and then show it by your actions and start cleaning up your mess clean up your mess and how do you do that? You literally just take a sheet of paper, write down all the mess. This is what I do. I mean, I just take a piece of paper and say, what am I now sick of experiencing? What feels like, the scripture says, your wages are stored in bags full of holes. So wages, guys, understand that that's work. Sometimes you feel like you're doing a lot of work and ain't nothing happening. Let me tell y'all a real scenario where you're putting in a lot of work you feel like you're doing all the stuff that everybody say do. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm putting in work. I'm doing all of these things and nothing's working. Are you willing to stop doing everything and sit still? Well, now I got bills to pay. Again, here's the question. Are you willing to stop doing everything and sit still? Ouch, ouch. It may require you to retract some things, Go say, y'all, I'm sorry, I can't. It may require you to 
cancel some things. It may require you to let some things go relapse. You gotta go back. It may require you to, am I, do y'all feel me? It will require you to be like, look a little crazy to people. Mm -hmm. I knew she was, mm -hmm. You know what I love? This is why we love the stories of people who were struggling and who had to, you know, they, it looked like they fell off and next thing you know, boom, I'm back, I'm back. We love those stories. Because it, you go, oh, okay, I'm not as bad. But here's what's funny. When the story first comes out and you hear about the mess, like, okay, let's take Tony Braxton. I don't know why they popped in my head. Tony Braxton, when it was in the news, it was all like, oh, my God, Tony Braxton is broke. She's bankrupt. It was all of this stuff. And everybody like, mm -hmm, see how money don't get you everything. People love to go there. Shut up. First of all, y'all need to understand what bankruptcy looks like. You can still be sitting on stacks and be bankrupt. But anyway, but watching... People, you you might let's let's come all the way down to your cousin or somebody you know that was popping and then they fell off, quote unquote. Sometimes the fall off is required. First of all, because there are people watching and then God needs them to see you get back up with a new with a new center. God needs them to see you get back up with a new conversation. I know I've been there. Like I'm like Lord, what? Oh man, I just gotta stop, stop, shut up, be quiet, shut it down. People gonna think this, shut it down. But this gonna go, shut it down. I can't be worried about what you think about me. I just gotta follow the orders. So don't be mad if you gotta like digress. Digress means you gotta fall back. Don't be mad. Don't be, it's because you're worried about somebody and it's the very people that point fingers and make fun ain't gotta pop the piss in as my grandmother would say. <laughs> or maybe they do. But they still miserable. Let me tell you something. I'd rather not be miserable. Ain't nothing like an unrested soul. I sleep so good at night. But most people don't. They're turmoil. They're tossing and turn. They're comparing themselves. They're miserable. They married to the wrong person. Oh my God. Uh, uh, uh. I'm having problems. So understand that in reading Haggai today, I'm going to give you all some steps. And the window to throw it out. Right, Patricia? Hey, Sandy. So I'm going to give you all some steps because I want to make this tangible for you. But understand that whatever is required of you next, you gotta trust God. Even for me, like there are some things that I keep hearing and I'm like, <laughs> let me tell you something. It's real easy to follow what you wanna do. You be excited, I done made this amazing plan. And then you hear something in your soul that was like, nah, scratch that. You like, wait, what? Wait, what? Scratch that. What? And then, when I get the new message, I was like, well, I'm not really qualified to teach this. I still have this conversation. So let me just tell you, as I, everybody always talking about teaching them with your confidence. What? I still, we have the same thoughts. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. I have a natural, I, I'm, I'm, this is, I don't mind sharing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, my daddy raised me, he's like, what you gonna do? This is, I tell y'all, this is that ghetto part of me where it's like, what you gonna do? Say something. I'll beat you up. Like, that's the kind of how I am. So if I say something and you got something to say, I'll be like, so I think that's why I don't care. Cause it's like, what you gonna do? You gonna like, try to fight me or something? Cause that's not going to, that's the ghetto need to get help part of me. So I'm just gonna put myself out there, you know, like whatever. So that is maybe confidence or it's also, I was raised to not be worried about what you think about me. Thank God for my daddy. My daddy raised me like that. So I do have that muscle built over other people. But let's be clear, when I set out to do something, I still feel like, am I qualified? I still feel like, are, you know, like, let me just, you know, stick to what I know, like whatever. But I, at any given time, God can tell you to do something and you gotta just do it. Transparency, right? Like for real, please don't think that I don't ever think, what? There's so many things that I haven't started on because I'm like, the, I have to be real myself and stop making things look sexy and go, you haven't started because you don't believe, like, what? There's a belief that you don't have. And really, you don't believe in God, you don't believe in yourself. Like, you're not trusting God. You cannot have faith and then not do. This, this is my own medicine to myself. So, okay, let's talk about it. Let me stay on top. So, Haggai verse 1 and 2. So, it talks about, you say this isn't the right time to build a temple for me. So, here's the first thing that you want to do. Here's how my brain systemizes this. 
And then I'm, now I'm gonna always tell you guys, do your own freaking homework, okay? Because I am not the end all be all and you should never be just depending on someone. I'm here to, to start a conversation in your soul and you gotta go finish that conversation with God, okay? So what you're gonna do is get you some Haggai, go to the internet, type in Haggai 1, this is verse uh, 5, just 1 through This is good. Just read the whole chapter. How about that? Read the whole chapter. Okay, so first thing first, it says, this isn't the right time to build a temple for me. So I want you to just really take time. This is how we're going to break the scripture down. What are all the things that you've been saying this isn't the right time for? So I'm going to give you some examples. One thing, one expensive thing that I used to always say, I don't have, like, it's not the right time to pay my taxes. <laughs> I'm just putting myself out there. It's not the right. I just literally became. No, not Haggai chapter. It's Haggai one, chapter one. There's no chapter five. There's only two chapters in Haggai. Chamber. So, um, thank you for putting in the comments, by the way. But listen, I'm gonna be real myself. Something as simple as this isn't the right time. So, what are some things that you have just been freaking putting off that you know you need to do? Taxes, going to the gym, maybe you stop eating certain stuff. For example. I just ate some steak. It was real good. It made my stomach hurt. My body does not like processing that meat. I was in pain. How many times am I going to eat a steak and be in pain? I keep saying it's not the right time, but I don't know what's happening inside my body. That could be resulting in something dangerous. And here I am putting it in my body. So again, you can take this scripture and make it very, very tangible. What are the things that you're saying you don't have? It's not the right time. It's not the right time to leave the relationship. It's not the right time to move to the new city. It's never a perfect time. You, what? Right? So this is how you do. So God is telling you something. How do you know? You just put it up against good and evil. Is this going to further, right? Is this going to further the kingdom or distract from it? So just judge it by good and evil. Is this good? Is this like, is it, is it causing confusion? Because if it is, it's not on the good side. Okay? It means it's not to come. So it may not be that it's evil, but it's just not the right time for that. There may be something that you want to do and it's not the right time. So it just, it, it just, it just, nothing is flowing. Everything is falling apart. You need to release that right now. It's just not the right time. It's not on your to-do list right now. Okay? So, this isn't the right time to build a temple for me, but what is, but is right for you to live in expensive houses. So here's what's cool. You can look at, if I look at my tax story, so for example, it wasn't the right time for me to pay my taxes. But it was right for me to live in high rises, you know what I'm saying, eat out all the time. Go right, call yourself on your stuff. Call yourself on your mess, okay? So, cause, cause that's how we get clear. There's something that you say is not time, you ain't got the money for, but you do have the money. This is just an example. Money is just an easy example for me. I don't want to do that. But it's like you said you didn't have time to pay your taxes, but you had time to do all these different things. Meanwhile, your tax bill is piling up. And so now you got a situation because you're expecting to harvest and, and receive, but you're not playing. You, your soil ain't right. Your ground ain't laid properly. It's faulty. Right? So this is how you look at your life. You go, wait, what? let me call myself out. Instead of waiting on somebody else to call me out, instead of waiting on a massive thing, emergency to happen, how about I just look at what I'm doing right now that needs to stop? So you want to have more of whatever, and you haven't been, like, fill in the blank. It's just, this, this is what this scripture, you put it in 2018. This is, there's something that God, for example, God's been dealing with me and my voice. The real talk. It's like, sing. And I'm like, what? When? I don't even have a business around singing. Like, what? This is real life stuff. Like, this is the reality of what keeps coming to me. You need to be singing. Okay, what am I going to sing? Ain't nobody buying my music. Oh, my God. Like, this is what? <laughs> Meanwhile, have I been preparing for these things? No. I'm busy doing business. And now, guess what? This is how we get in. Y'all know I cuss, I'm sorry, Lord. This is how we get jacked up. <laughs> Y'all know I'm trying to work on my cuss. This is how we get jacked up. Because you build a life around something, and here you are, God is saying, like, yo, I need you to do this. And I'm like, well, I got a whole lot to maintain now. And God, like, this. 
Ain't nobody told you to do that. <laughs> and it's like, dang. Dang. This is truth. But so, so let's be clear. I ain't got all your answers, okay? And let's be clear. I'm superhuman. But let's also be clear. It don't mean, like, what? The, the call is still the call. Like, God living you like this. So you're like, Lord, mm. God telling you to do this, but you're like, I can't invest in that. But you invested in them tacos last night. <laughs> I'm just saying. So this is what I'm working on, and I'm just sharing with you guys. This is how we make it tangible. Look at what it is that we're putting off that God is telling us to do. So, for example, in this scripture, God is telling them to rebuild the temple. God is telling them to refocus. God is telling them to stop doing all the hot mess stuff that they're doing. They acting real ratchet, real wild. So he's allowed people to come in and take them from their land and make them slaves. And they're like, they're just struggling. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to speak for, for how I grew up. The struggle was real. It was like you only had enough to, to, to do the build and to exist. We were never thriving. It was just you're surviving. You survive from year to year with one or two, you know, trips down to the south to visit a cousin. It was not even when you got there. Don't be using my gas in a rental car. Mm -mm, we ain't got money for hotel. We got to stay at somebody's house. Like this is the, the struggle was real. So the way we and that's why this is the work we got to do. There's cultural things because some people didn't grow up like that. Some people just grew up. They don't even know what struggle. They be like, oh my god. I got, I love my white friends. We all, we, when we talk black, white, me and my friends that are white, we really, I be blowing, y'all know I'm just regular. Right? So I had a white friend, she was like, oh my God, she's crying. I'm like, girl, she's like, girl, I got $700,000 in the bank. <laughs> what? I have my savings, I have my savings, oh yeah, $700,000. I said, girl, shut up. This is white people problem. I mean, we laugh, and she was like, can you believe me? I'm like, girl, do you know the average person don't even, what are you saying? Like, and it was funny, because when I started Oh, okay, I guess I'm not that bad. No, boo, you're not. So get it together. You're gonna be able to bounce back, <laughs> right? So the reality is this. God gives us choice. Cause y'all know I can go on, I'm not gonna go on. And on. God gives us choice, and in this scripture, he had to, they had to go through something harsh so they could get so he could get their attention. And so here's my prayer. I don't wanna get exiled and stolen and and, and be a slave to something else because of my lack of preparing, my lack of, of, of acknowledging what God is calling me to do. And so that's what this is about. And I want you guys to feel the same charge that I feel in my soul, which is you need to answer the call, period. So you gotta look at, and then, in your day-to-day -day life, like, what are you doing? So if you know you want to have more money, then why are you just spending, waking up every single day, spend, 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 out to eat, da, 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 da. That doesn't matter. Your kids want to eat out. They ain't running nothing. Better cook. If they don't eat what's cooked, they're not eating. The end. Because you're trying to build something so that they have a future. Right? So all of these little bitty things that we do every single day are, are the things that this scripture is talking about. Like, we can apply to everything. 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 So I'm just saying, get a sheet of paper and write out all the things that you're putting off, that you're tolerating, that you're all the things that you're procrastinating on, right? And then look at what you are doing. Because like this scripture was real bold. It said, you don't have time to build my temple. It's a hot mess right now, but you live in an expensive house. That's when you'll put your finger up and just walk out the room. Because <laughs> it's just like an ouch moment. So you got to call yourself out on paper and say, okay, here's what I want. Here's what I'm putting off. No, not what I want. Here's what I'm putting off. Okay. Here's what I'm saying I don't have time to do. And the funny thing is, you don't even know all that God has for you. I don't know all the ways. I don't know how God wants to use my voice. I don't know. So the whole thing is like, I keep hearing you need to be singing. Okay. But here I have this whole other life. <laughs> so now it's like, but 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 the, the 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 ignorance in me and the forgetfulness is like, are you trying to put God in a box? Because 
Like you don't know what or how, and it's not your job to know. So same thing goes for you. You have a call to do something. Don't be trying to figure out how it's gonna happen. I'm just saying, y'all get into Haggai 1, okay? It's good. Read it and then just take a pen and paper and write it out. And understand that in this time, you may be experiencing something that's not so fun. It's hurtful. It feels like a punishment. Or you feel like maybe it's a breakup. But it's like if that wasn't the relationship for you, you need to go through the breakup. Understanding that this is what's necessary because I jumped in something that I shouldn't have jumped into. And you know what, Lord? I'm sorry. I apologize to that person. Don't start trying to figure out why they wrong. Just say, hey, man, I'm sorry for my part I played. You know, I'm grateful for what I've learned. If, even if it leaves you with nothing and depletion, just know that God is the restorer. Like, you got to really be cool with whatever consequences you're experiencing. Remember, Proverbs 12 and 14 said, you are getting what you have said and done. So your actions and your conversation is why you're in a situation. So, Lord, thank you for the situation. Because in Haggai, these people are in a situation. They're stuck like Chuck. And God said, now, if you actually, now that I got your attention... Because you may be feeling, you know, like you're a slave to your job. You may be feeling broke. You may be feeling emotionally depleted. Now that I have your attention, let's not let this be the only time you look at me. <laughs> I'm God. Look at me every single day. All day. <laughs> I got you. The end. That's what I got from the word today, y'all. It was so freaking good. I was like, oh. Read it. Get your life on it. If you don't understand whatever part you pull up, look at different translations of it so that you can get a thorough understanding of it. Okay, so if you are just really new to the Bible, try reading the contemporary English version first and then going to the NIV Amplified and the King James because all of those give you a great well-roundedness of the scripture. And get your life. Don't just read and be like, like, this is good. No, take a pen of paper and say, where am I BSing myself? And what do I need to get together now? This scripture, let me tell you what's interesting about it is the urgency. Like when God told Haggai, he was a prophet. Haggai is a prophet in the Bible. When God said, go tell the people something, he did it. He just did it. He just did it, right? And it's just a reminder for me, like, when I'm supposed to be doing something, I need to just do it. It's hard because, I'm going to stop saying it's hard because I don't want to receive that. It is definitely interesting because it requires you to move without knowing all the details but that's what faith is and that's what god is it's all invisible pools and you just gotta decide like i'm just gonna go with this we need to have radical obedience come on melissa radical i like that word radical like david is natalie's giving me the hand clap so thank you guys for a good tea today mine is cold now i'm gonna heat it back up i hope you guys enjoyed it um, it got my soul. We have to preach too. <laughs> Thank you. Faith comes through hearing the word. Right? Like, I got my life. Let me tell y'all, it ain't over. It just got started. Um, look at what we are doing right. Um, oh, Lord, we punish you for your appointing to us a great deal. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, don't be each other. Absolutely. My business is well through of you. Right? This is not coming from you. You're being used all in my business. Amen. Because what I would naturally do is just be quiet. Like, I wouldn't do this. So, I definitely believe and know that. This is not, this is the very thing that I said I wouldn't do. <laughs> I'm going to just tell y'all, God has a sense of humor because of the way I grew up in church. I had such an interesting church experience. I was just anti all of this. And I'm like, I don't want to be talking about scriptures on Facebook. I'm not a preacher. I'm not any of these. I don't, what? This is not what I would be doing. <laughs> so, let me just be clear. How God has a sense of humor because here I am, compelled, and just here we are. <laughs> uh, we're the temple. Exactly. We're the temple, and the kingdom work is in everything that you do. You're, you have kingdom work in your parenting. You have kingdom work in your, uh, in your when you at your job or when you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you work for yourself, self-employed. There's, there's a kingdom quality you should uphold to where when you walk people always tell me and I think it's funny they always be like you have something something's different it's God it's not me it's not and it's it's the light of God when you really surrender and you open up and you're really doing this kind of work like people are attracted to your spirit because 
God is love. And, and so and people are experiencing lack of love. They don't have love. They don't have care. They don't have peace. And so you're exuding. You're really just pouring yourself into this. It comes out of you without even saying anything. So when you walk around, when you, when you guys are attracted to this, which is what's coming inside of me. So, and it's coming out. Like you can't be something outwardly. You could try. It'll last for a little while, but not for long. But you can't be something outwardly that you aren't inward, you know? So, anyway, I'm just reading comments. The, the tea is over. So you, if you have to go for the day, you could go. Um, I'm feeling this. I've been experiencing this as well. God is using you. Oh, I know what I need to do now. Good. I hope this brings you guys transformation. That's why my prayer is that, you know, I get out of the way. Y'all see I slip and cuss. <laughs> Can't have me in the way. Got to just the word. <laughs> oh, just the word. And please believe that I'm not perfect. What are some of the things you've been saying? This isn't right time for now. Seriously. Like, there's so much. So many people, like, even when it comes to, like, um, the courses and stuff that I teach, like, I never, I, if you don't buy my course, like, when I'm doing my business stuff and I'm selling you guys courses, I'm not feeling the way that if you don't buy the course, but I never want the reason for you not to take action on anything, not even just my course, on anything. I never think the reason should be I don't have the time or I don't have the money because you can leverage other people's money. You can, things happen. Like, you got to understand that if you believe in God, you believe in miracles. You believe in things that just happen. You're like, what? This just happened? Somebody calling you and be like, oh, we gave you a credit back for this. Oh, you know, you owe, we owe you money from your life. You know, you overpay. Like, things happen. And so you can, like, never sit in that excuse. Just say that I don't, I don't make this a priority right now. Because that's really what it is. It's not a, it's not a priority to me right now. And be cool. People don't like that because then you got to say, well, eating out every day is a priority. So what's not a priority, this getting my business together is not a priority. I'd rather just keep saying I'm getting my business together. I'd rather just keep, you know, trying to do the same thing and just getting the result. Whether it's from me or the next person or whether you just need to get a book and read. If you're not making the time to read the book, then what's the purpose of buying the book? So you know, this Haggai makes you have to just sit in some serious truth. And then say thank you, Daddy. Girl, my daddy is just, he is funny. I got my dad doing diet thing right now. Just eating for his health because he needs to eat better for his health. He is just having fit. Oh Lord, what can I eat? Oh, what can I eat? <laughs> he's hilarious. So tomorrow I'm cooking my parents' breakfast. And he's like, mm -mm. he already said, no, I'm like, Dad, you didn't know I'm gonna cook. You are dropping bombs and I just popped up. Yay, Sandy. Hey everyone. You guys, the comments are lit. Sometimes the fall off is required. It is. Like, I'm literally like, the fact that God keeps telling me, like, sing, I'm like, what am I singing? I don't know what to sing right now. I know, y'all probably, probably like, what, girl, you got all these songs? But it's not, it's like, I'm not gonna say it's hard. I'm using my words, I'm trying to, because I'm paying my life with my words. But it's like, okay, what am I gonna sing? So it's just, that's tough. And I do have a business that I'm running, so like, do I just let everything go? Like, literally, this is a legit thought process. Like, am I just, because I'm not afraid to let things go. Like, I can literally shut everything down tomorrow. I'm pretty good at that, actually. I'm so, I'm good at getting unattached and <laughs> going, hey guys, gotta go. <laughs> gotta go. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to, and, I'm, and also sitting still so you can hear from God. Like, okay, Lord, what is it? How is it? What's the next best step? Like, I don't need to know all the steps. What's the next best step? Am I to just stop completely? Is that what you're saying now? Just completely stop everything? This is how you got to have a conversation. And then you got to get quiet. So you can't go. I don't want to look for my Kardashians, but I have not watched Kardashians because I'm like, I can't right now. The Kardashians are not a part of what I need to be putting into my being. And so I just can't. It's not a time for the Kardashians. I have to just catch it up later because I need to hear and see what's happening because there's a transition that's happening. Same thing for you. Like, I just believe that God is like, okay, what y'all doing, baby? Hurry up. Hurry up. Um, look at all these comments. Okay. Thank you, Lakeisha. I enjoyed it. You're welcome. Um, ooh, it's a lot. Okay. Um, what are you supposed to do? Oh, I asked you that. The whole thing is like, when you have, when you have, when you know that there's something that you feel that you were called to do, you just, that's when you just communicate and say, Lord, show me my mentor. Like, what's my next best step? And then write the vision. The scripture says, write the vision and make it plain. 
Write out everything that you feel that you're called to do. Write it out into detail. Like for example, I tell you, I talk to my members all the time about vision. If you say, I want to be rich, that's not detailed enough. What does rich look like for you? So I know I want my business goal. My business goal is $40,000 a month. Okay, $40,000 a month. I want the business to at least minimally pay me 20, okay? And I know that also my business is not gonna have an overhead that costs $20,000 a month. Therefore, I can even change my profit margin. But in general, like I have the numbers down to the T. And well, where will this money be going? So like, you gotta put in your housekeeper, you gotta put in your luxury high rise, like all my things that I know, my assistants, my, the, the things I'm using online, all of that stuff is detailed. Dude, that's called detail. You have to write the detail of your vision. Therefore, it's, it, you be, like that kind of clarity clicks in your brain. And so then if you keep in communication and you keep looking at the vision and you keep writing it and making it plain and keep applying these principles, a lot of them are in Proverbs. Proverbs will get your whole life as it relates to business um, and everything else. But then you're you're gonna naturally start gravitating toward what you are saying and do. Like everything's gonna adjust to the vision. You just adjust, and then you look at things that come to you. Like somebody's gonna ask you to do something, and like look at the vision. Does that match your vision? If even though the vision isn't happening yet, it's done. It's already done in the spiritual realm. Does what this action today does it match that? Because if it doesn't, and the more you just take away things that don't match that, you're gonna make space for things that do. God's going to put it on your conveyor belt. The end. So happy I was able to catch your line. The message today spoke to me in so many different ways. Yay! I need to repackage my skincare products and I don't have the physical funds, but I know God is calling me to take steps to get it done. Right. And so if you have inventory, just sell the inventory you have and just be clear on. And a lot of times, let me tell y'all something. I was talking to somebody yesterday. A lot of times we say we don't have the money for something, but we haven't even looked at what actually costs. So what does it actually cost to repackage the skincare? What does it actually cost? Put that down on paper, even though you don't have the money. That's a faith move. Come on, somebody. That's a faith move. So now I'm going to put down the actual cost of it so that now I have the number in my head. And what's beautiful about a number and the clarity in that is now you know how much you need. And so then you can look at, Lord, what's my actions to make this happen? What would you now desire me to do? And just be attentive. Have your attentive, like literally be looking for the answer, expecting the answer. That's a faith move. So if you ask God for something, expect to hear from God and then make space to hear from God. That's the whole situation right there. If you ask God for clarity, like let me tell you how clear, I got, I was asleep and I got the whole conversation that I'm gonna have for a contract. The whole conversation and I just rolled over, woke up and just made some notes and went back to sleep. And I woke up ready again, I'm like, oh, that was so clear. Because I always kept wondering, how is this cover? I keep seeing this vision for this business. I'm going to have multiple businesses. Like, that's just a done thing. They're going to be very successful. It's going to be my it. Like, that's just another part of, like, my life, right? And in one of the things that I know I want to do, I kind of feel like it's getting closer. So I was like, well, how does that conversation even go? And I just went to sleep. You know, it's been on my heart and my soul to, like, Lord, how would I close that deal? And I went to sleep and had the conversation. And the whole thing is that's a training too. So like if you know that things are going to come to you while you're sleeping, you got to keep a pen and paper. Like you got to know that you, you got to train yourself to wake up and write it down because that's a whole other, this is a, that's a whole other conversation. But it starts with getting clear because clarity allows so much. Clarity allows so much. So if you're not clear on how much it costs to repackage, then it's just an idea and a dream that you know you need to repackage. Like you know that, but what does it cost? And then look at what are the things I can do radically and, and faith-based that'll allow me to um, make this happen sooner, quicker, faster. Guys, show me the next best step. Uh, we have blue. This is good. I have to pull out my notepad and write down what I really need to be doing. Boom. Right, my mama always said, who's going to do something about it? <laughs> right, like I love growing up with my parents because they definitely gave us, they were like, don't be worried about what else People gonna always have something to say, and them same people really be admiring you on the slick, on the low low, just by new labels. I just started doing that this week. It really works. Um, don't get stuck in in the lie you tell yourself just because you have a gap in knowledge. Come on, Lori, that's good. I like how she worded that. Don't get stuck in the lie you tell yourself just because you have a gap in knowledge to get where you want to go. Doesn't mean it's not for you. No shame in not knowing. 
Get the education you need to reach your goals. Well said. That was so well said. That's my sister. My housekeeper is before shoes. Correct. Like, I got to have people. You Housekeeping? I mean, all of that. I'm not doing none of that. Because you could be doing something else. Val like, like, people need to work. Like, my housekeeper in LA, when I tell you she should have a multi-million dollar business, because she has such a gift. When she done cleaning the house, I swear it feel like Jesus came walk through. I'm like, dang. And then I go clean up, and it'd be, I'd be just still feeling like stress. I'm like, why do I not clean like that? That's her gift. She's good at it. And I tell her all the time, she's like, Lakeisha, can you start the business? I'm like, I, ain't got, it's not, I can't start that business for you. But I'm just trying to tell you that no matter what, like, I want to fly her from LA to here in Dallas. Because I'm like, oh gosh, I need to find a housekeeper in Dallas. And it's just been interesting. But anyway, because you got to find somebody you trust and somebody that gets baseboards. Because I don't play, like, I need old school southern cleaning. Like, the baseboards, the ceiling fans, we're not having dust nowhere. Like, I can't play that. So I say that to say, you have to look at what your highest value tasks are. And for me, also comfort. How do I have a desire to live? Like, I just want to read books and learn and just do this stuff all day. That's what I want to do. So there needs to be a team to support me. And God will provide. Annette, I'm with you. If I could find one out here in the boonies, they would be here now. Right. Right, 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 right. You guys are hilarious. I love y'all, man. I still listen to my CD I purchased from you. Oh my God, was that 2016? You know what? I need to have my concert. And let me tell you something. I'm so not perfect. I owe, I have a list of everybody who bought my CDs. I'm giving y'all, y'all gotta get the, the online concert because I'm like, uh, calling myself out on that. It keeps me pumped when I'm in the office working on my new content. Yeah, I think I need to just look at, I'm not valuing my music or my voice the way that I should be. And the, the lie that I told myself when I started my online business was that it was for me to make more time for piano, voice, and dance because I wanted to do artist development. So the reason I started Short Hair Bootcamp was so that I could take myself from behind the chair and work on my art. But then Short Hair Bootcamp became consuming because it was like, oh my God, like I built an online business, yada, yada, yada. So you can have good distraction. That's a whole thing. It's a lot of, I, it is just coming out of me today. It's a lot. Like you can have good distractions. And although Short Hair Bootcamp was a success, that wasn't the success that I should have been working on. That's legit pure honesty. And then you built this monster. It's like it's working. And it's not that I shouldn't have been working on it, but I just didn't prioritize my music. And like I said, I was. So let's be clear. It's not a bad thing and it's not like I need to delete it or whatever. But it took place over my music. Why? Because it started making a ton of money. So you have to be careful. It's also an eye opener for me to like make a vow to not put business and money over my the thing that I know that God wants me to be doing. Now, my gift is my voice, whether I'm teaching or singing, and actually I'm gonna be doing both. I do both now, even now. It's funny, I already do it. I'm singing in November. I'm teaching and I'm singing and I'm speaking in November. Um, but the moral of the story is, you see how I'm talking to you guys because hopefully in listening to me, you hear or see examples of how, it, how this stuff manifests in the real world because it's one thing to read the Bible, and I'm not a Bible head to where I'm just going to be reading the Bible. I know some people who can quote scriptures, but they never make it tangible. And so you got to make it tangible so that you can get transformation, because I'm just only here for transformation. If the Bible wasn't transformative, I wouldn't waste my time. Like, I wouldn't spend my time. This stuff is transforming my life, so I'm up in that thing. Like, I just be rolling over at night and reading it. Like, if I can't sleep, I just read I wake up, I just read. It's funny how I always find a scripture that just makes me go, ooh. Like, you can't help but to change. So, you gotta think about it, guys. What are you spending your time on? Because if it's only on stuff like music that ain't got nothing to do with nothing, reality shows, yada, 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 at some point, you're gonna feel depleted and you're not even gonna know why. But it's because your, your senses, your eyes, your nose, your ears, your mouth, this is what's it's the, it's the go between your soul, right? And the spirit of God. And so like, you're letting things in and your soul is gonna receive. Like, oh, this feels good. This sounds good. And like, and next thing you know, you're trying to like change your life and the soul is like, mm, I like the way this sounds and this feels. 
Transformation don't always sound good, it feels good. So well, let's try to look. Um, what is the highest value activity you can do? Exactly. Like I'm telling you, I'm that's one thing that I have been practicing, and it's and it's interesting because when you start trying to practice it, you panic a little bit because you're so used to doing things that you you know, like everything's still happening around you. So then you panic of who's gonna do this, who's gonna do that? Here's what I know, it'll get done. You just gotta turn, you gotta become numb to it. You gotta train yourself and just go, I don't even know, I don't even, I can't. Because the highest value thing that I should be doing is this right here. That CD really blessed me, yay. You're helping me, good, obsessed with your SoundCloud. Oh, and you know what's funny, this morning I was like, I should just put everything on SoundCloud, that's funny. That's confirmation. Jay says thank you, good, good. Okay, y'all might go. Thank you. You're welcome, Kareem. I just have to have faith that he will provide the phone and the party. Right. Do your part. That's that part. Do your part. And your part looks like clarifying on paper what it is. Because how will you even know that the blessings in front of you and the opportunities? You also have to create opportunities. How will you know those opportunities if you don't even know what you should be like? Do, like you have no clue of the numbers. So if you don't know the numbers, that's why I'm always about numbers, because numbers help you just make big moves. If you don't know the numbers, then how you know the opportunity, like, oh, this opportunity will help me get to that number. This is the thing that's on my vision. This is what God is telling me to do. Here's what it costs. And then there's a scripture that says, count up the cost or something like that. That's, not, that's another one I should do a good tea on. But there's a scripture that says, let me, let me just look at it real quick. Count up the cost. It's like something about building a house and you ain't counting up what it's cost. Let me see. Um, it says, suppose you, one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Oh, that right there. That right there. Go study that scripture, Kareem. That's in Luke 14, verse 28. Now that's that right there. Count up the cost. Like, you can apply that to your budget. You want to get buy a house, but you got to go see what it takes to get the house. What are the costs to actually, what is all those details? Don't not, don't just go try to like, just don't get scared of it. Don't not do it. Don't make it be a big thing. Count up the cost. Your budget. You want to have X amount or whatever. You want to take a trip. You got to plan for it. What does that trip cost? That way you have an idea of what that number is, and that way you can actually just write it down. Perfect. So that's how we do it. Boom. I'm done for real. I love you guys. This is Good Tea for Life with KeepsMeShow.com. Oh, church announcements. Dallas on Monday, sales and marketing class. If you know you want to build more clientele, you need a process behind it, you want to learn how to sell on social media, you want to like increase your income, then you want to meet me at my loft here in Dallas. I'm um, having a class October 15th, and um, it's 99 bucks. Like, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. I'm literally giving away so much content. It's going to be crazy. Um, loving your nails. Thanks, boo. When I can get to LA, I get to my lady. Um, yeah, so meet me in Dallas. It's at LaquishaMichelle.com. You can get your tickets. There's one on the 15th and one on the 22nd. There's only 20 seats per, per, per event. So if you know you want to make the 22nd, go. If you know you want to come on the 15th, go. If you want to come to both, come to both. It's in Dallas. It's all about the marketing, um, building your clientele, like really helping you build a process around building your clientele. And we're going to practice. It's a boot camp. So you're going to be practicing. There's worksheets. The way you, when you leave, you have your worksheets. You have your, we're recording you practicing your skill. It's going to be amazing. Lori, come. Oh my God, I would love to have you. Oh my God, I would love to have you. Love you too, girl. And see you later. You're welcome. Yes. Okay. Y'all know me a lot So holla back. This is just the live stream for today. I got to still live stream and do my sales. Look, I practice what I preach, do my sales for this class that's going to be on this Monday. And then there's one um, the following Monday as well. I am definitely going to use this space for more music, more live events. Um, and y'all know at any live event, I am definitely singing. So it's going to be transformational and I'm not even styling. Oh yeah, it's, this is this is the same thing I used to sell online courses. So it's, it's sales, sales are sales are sales. Um, and we're practice, we're practicing. This is, a, I want to do boot camp drills. Um, y'all know my daddy sergeant. I was like, daddy, tell me about the drill, which I need to do. I need to do this. Because that's pretty much what I did for myself. I put myself through a, like a drill where I had a set of things that I did all the time. And that type of discipline is the reason why I can work from wherever and really do whatever I put my mind to. You know what I mean? Like, God and discipline. And the funny thing is, God is all about discipline. Like, putting a set 
preparing for what you want to receive. Like it's done, it's yours, and he makes it your choice. Like either you're gonna have panic and punishment and you're gonna feel like crap because you're receiving some crappy life, but it's a result of our action and our words. So we get a chance to change that. And when it comes to sales and marketing, I just, I studied it because I mean, I had to eat, let's be clear. And I wanted a better life for myself. So I had to learn sales and marketing and how they coexist. And uh, I got a formula that works. So you know you want to have you um, a six-figure sales strategy? Come out at your girl in Dallas, October 15th, October 22nd. Um, you can pick either or a day. So just hurry up and go get your tickets. There's only 20 people per class. And um, it's going to be here in my studio. It's going to be fun. And um, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to see y'all on the new live stream. Thank you for watching. Share this stream. Y'all share this. Share this, share this, share this. So glad you're open and real true sets free. Yay, you're welcome. Can't help but be, I can't keep up with all this. You know, you have a bunch of lines. You can't keep up with that stuff. At some point, you're going to get caught in your lie. It's easier to be yourself. Be you. Love you guys. Bye.